Hello everyone! My lecture for today will focus on the receptive skills in communicating. So as you can see in the diagram, there are four macro skills that we need to enhance in communicating. So these are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So as you can see in the diagram, spoken communication covers listening and speaking whereas written communication centers on reading and writing. Now, if you take a look at the column, the input would cover both listening and reading, and that is what we call as the receptive skills. Whereas for the output, we have both speaking and writing, and that is what we call as the productive skills now overall we have to pay attention to enhancing all these four macro skills of language learning in order for us to be considered as good communicators after all that is the purpose of taking up this course purposive communication for a deeper understanding on the receptive skills, which is critical reading in particular, I would want you to take a look at this short video. This presentation is going to have a look at the idea of receptive skills and how we can go about teaching receptive skills lessons. There are two receptive skills and they are reading and listening. If we think about, first of all, why do we read or listen, then there are probably two main answers to that. Firstly, it could either be for entertainment or it could be for a specific purpose. Within the reading and listening areas, there are a number of sub-skills that we can teach our students. Firstly, what we can do is to show different examples of reading. So let's say, for example, that we had just bought ourselves a new video camera, and along with that video camera came a whole book of instructions. In order to find out how to get that camera working, then we would need to very carefully read each page of that brochure, and that would be what is called detailed reading. Now, unfortunately, most of us don't get our video cameras working straight away because we don't do that detailed reading. We tend to do something which is slightly quicker, which is called scanning. And in scanning, what we're trying to do is to look for specific information. The other type of quick reading that we do is something called skimming. And what we're doing in skimming is we're trying to get a general overview of what the text is actually saying. Other types of reading skill that we can actually teach is reading for prediction. So having read a certain amount of the various texts, we can then say what we think is going to happen next. Um, the final one for deduction, so from the information that's been given, can we make some form of inference, for example, about who actually wrote that? Okay, so the video gave us an overview of what we have to anticipate as we discuss the topic on critical reading. But overall, the receptive skills would cover not only critical reading, but critical viewing and media literacy as well. So let's focus first on the first aspect of the receptive skill, which is on critical reading. Now, why is it important for us to take a deeper look in this particular topic? It's because we want us not only to become fluent speakers of the English language, we also want us to become fluent in terms of reading. And when we say fluency in terms of reading, we focus on the speed of one as he or she reads. In addition to the speed, of course, implied, uh, impliedly, we take into consideration also the level of comprehension. Okay? 
So what then are the secrets to become a critical reader? As discussed in your modules, here are the seven useful tips. So let's take them one by one. The first one is for you to become part of the writer's audience. So please take note that every writer, every book, every author, every reading material has its own or his own writer's audience audience so these are the audience or the readers rather with which the books are intended to okay so if you are a reader you choose something that interests you if you are pertaining to entertainment whereas if uh, you are looking for information you choose a book or a reference that would give you crucial facts about your respective field. So, for example, if you're an HRM student, you would look for references that would be helpful in the hospitality and tourism field. Whereas, if you are a social science student, you will look for references on political science, on communication, on psychology, and the likes. Okay? So, we become specific target audience of respective authors number two prepare to read with an open mind now we have to accept the fact that not all the things that we read may or may side with what we believe in especially if that is an editorial piece so in order for us to have a wider understanding about specific topics, we have to be open-minded in terms of the ideas that each unique author has. And we have to respect that. Okay? Again, we may have similar ideas or we may have differing ideas with respective authors. So the bottom line here is we have to be respectful and we have to be open-minded. Number three, consider the title. So most often than not, the title would be reflective of what the book or what the material is all about. That is why, for example, in research, we have to, as much as possible, be straight to the point. Uh, we have to make use of maximum of 12 words only, ideally, in order for us to tell what a particular study is all about. Okay? It has to be reflective of the contents of a particular piece. So the title is effective if it summarizes everything about a particular book. Next book or material number four read slowly like the adage says slowly but surely right it is not a reading a speed reading contest okay not unless of course you are in a rush and you are only looking for specific facts like what you do when you are skimming or scanning Ideally, we have to read slowly, and that is the edge of reading over listening. For reading, we can always go over the materials if we did not understand what it's meant, what it has meant during the first reading. Unlike for listening, that if the communicator has finished talking already or speaking, we cannot repeat anymore, especially if we, can, we don't have the chance to uh, to let him or her repeat what he or she just said. Unless, of course, it's a podcast. Okay? So, for reading, you absorb everything. You reabsorb something if you did not understand it or comprehend it in one reading. Okay? Number five, use the dictionary and other appropriate reference works. So, as Gen Z... Learners as you are, I believe that it is very helpful if you have your digital dictionaries in your gadgets, in your smartphones, okay? Because not only that it is very handy, like you bring it with you everywhere, just as you feel naked when you're not with your cell phone, okay? 
you can easily access difficult words that you may encounter when you are outside of your homes or when you are beyond the confines of your school. Okay? You can access it in terms of the meanings. Okay? So for difficult words that you might uh, see in a brochure or in an announcement perhaps, you can readily access their meanings through dictionaries. Okay? What else? Pronunciations also. Dictionaries nowadays, especially the smartphone dictionaries that you have, whether it be Webster's or Oxford, they provide the correct pronunciation of words as well. Okay, so for example, when you go to a restaurant and you're not familiar with how you would pronounce the word a la carte, okay, is it a la carte or is it a la carte? Then you can... Um, already refer to your dictionary okay so for dictionaries like this we have the offline version which are really very helpful very handy on the part of students like you okay number six make notes always make notes so if you're using your electronic notebook okay for taking down notes you still do that okay but if you are the type of person who prefers the traditional way of taking down notes with the hard copy or the real notebook okay? and the pen, of course. That is nice because uh, there's uh, nothing beats the original, as they say. If you need to write something in an instant and, for example, your gadget is low bat then you can always resort to the traditional or the original notebook. Now, what's the relevance of making notes? Let's not rely 100% on our memory, okay? Because always there is a big tendency that we will forget. However, if we take down notes, even keywords only, then that would help us recall how a particular explanation has been um, explained or has been lectured, for instance, by your professor. Or you can just simply recall things as to how they happened through the use of keywords. So it's not necessary that you write in complete sentences. Okay? Probably you can only write in your notes the difficult words that you would want to use in the future in creative writing and so on okay and the night the last item here is keep a reading journal okay and it would also help if you have a target for yourself for example one month i will try to read one book whether it be fiction or non-fiction Okay. So, it would help you enhance your vocabulary. It would help you, um, ex uh, what's this? It, it would help you enhance how you explain your ideas later on, how you summarize your points when you argue, for instance. Or it would also help you identify facts vis-a-vis -vis opinion. Okay? So the bottom line here is you have to really expose yourselves to reading materials in order to become a critical reader. So logic would dictate that you cannot learn to become a critical leader not unless you learn, not unless you like reading. Okay? So what then is content area reading? What is meant by content area reading as compared to just simply reading so if we recall our discussion on the difference between hearing and listening we mentioned last time that hearing is some is is what receiving information merely receiving information through the use of your ears. Whereas when you listen, it entails more attention on the part of the receiver of the message. So same is true for content area reading. 
as compared to just simply reading, content area reading requires more attention on the part of the reader. So one goal of content area reader reading rather is to get students to think as they read. Okay? When you say you think as you read, you involve as well your prior knowledge about particular issues when you read. So take note, um, we are no longer people with an empty slate or tabula rasa. At this age, you, all, you are already knowledgeable about certain things. You may be an expert already about a particular field. So this is what is meant by content area learning. You include your prior knowledge, your experiences, your language development, your reading ability, and of course, your attitude towards it. And all of these would affect content area learning on the part of the reader. Okay, so moving on. So what is meant by that? If you perceive something to be hard in terms of reading, then obviously it would make it difficult for you to understand. So proper mindset would also count. So what is meant by text features then? According to Faber in 2015, authors often organize their text by patterns. So what are these patterns? Okay. The first one is comparison or contrast. So when you compare, you look into the similarities of things. Whereas when you say contrast, you highlight the differences. Okay? So you do that when you analyze, when you synthesize the facts or the information that you get from what you read. Next, descriptive patterns. When you say descriptive patterns, it would focus on how you describe particular things, okay? So, through the use of adjectives, through the use of highfalutin words, perhaps, for creative writing, but not for uh, factual writing, okay? Or, um, what's this? When you would want to explain something in a simple manner. Okay, what else? Episode pattern, time sequence. So these are uh, techniques that we can use both for literary and um, what's this? Factual or uh, literary and not non-literary scripts or pieces. Process, cause and effect. Okay, in your case, you can do that for um, following a simple recipe, perhaps. Okay, for the field of HRM, for your science-related courses, you use that during experiments. Okay, and of course, general to specific, that's the deductive method. And the inductive method is, uh, is the... Okay. Is the reverse. I'm sorry for that noise. Okay. So, specific to general would be the inductive method, okay? So, what are text features in the first place? They would differ from subject to subject, again, because they are, uh, there are many factors such as jargons that would affect how you understand a specific text. What are jargons again? So, jargons are terms which are exclusive to a particular field. Okay, so what then are reading strategies that we can look into the first one is previewing so when you say previewing just like when you look into or you watch uh, teasers of movies okay the preview would uh, focus on the introduction in the last part of the text so most likely as explained in your modules preview would be reading the first sentence and then the last sentence of the piece or of the article so it's a preview already you're just getting some tips on what the article or what the book is all about 
Okay, the next one is reading for main ideas. Okay, so we do that when we synthesize. We combine ideas. We use our own words as much as possible. We use uh, reading for main ideas also when we analyze, right? So when we analyze, that's when we break down an idea into smaller parts in order for us to be uh, to have more understanding, to gain more comprehension on the particular topic. Okay? The next one is using context clues for vocabulary. What is context in the first place? So context is the combination of vocabulary and grammar, which predicts about the meaning of a particular word phrase or sentence so for example if you're not familiar with the meaning of a particular word you look into how it was used in a particular sentence and it would imply a lot about how it is uh, how it means rather okay so the sentence meaning and then the vocabulary meaning would uh, depend on how it was defined probably or there might be some synonyms or antonyms that would give you a hint in that particular in a particular paragraph for instance or there might also be examples that would serve as uh, that would illustrate okay, indirectly the meaning of a particular word or phrase or sentence okay the next one is making inferences. When we talk about inferences, we are giving out logical conclusions about something. So, most likely what will happen. Okay? And then, of course, conclusion. Take note, they're not the same with... Uh, conclusions are not the same with inferences. When you talk about conclusions, these are implied or inferred information, which are not clearly stated. That's why you are doing or you are drawing such okay so the bottom line here is to look into the purpose of the author and his or her target audience so that you would be helped you there would be an aid on your part in uh, reading okay? and when you encounter difficult terminologies Okay, so earlier, the video that I have shown you highlighted the sub-skills in critical reading. So, the speaker mentioned or the video mentioned about detailed reading, scheming, scanning, prediction, and deduction. Now, I would want to highlight the difference between scheming and scanning. Okay. Yes, they both use rapid eye movement and keywords through text. However, they have different purposes. When you talk about skimming, it is when you read rapidly in order to get a general overview of the material. Okay? Whereas, when you say scanning, this time it refers to reading rapidly or fastly in order to find specific facts. So, let's have an illustration. When we talk about skimming, that's what you do when you read the newspaper. Okay? You don't read all the articles from first paragraph to the last day, okay? from page one up to the last section of the newspaper, right? So, skimming is what you call, what you do. You only pick okay, a particular topic that interests you and then... More often than not, you only read the first paragraph up to the second paragraph, perhaps. Okay, So that is what is meant by skimming. Again, you are just looking for the general overview of the material. For instance, you're not really that into politics, then you go straight to sports or to the entertainment, right? And then you are not really... Uh, interested about finding out what happens about a particular story you just want to get an overview you look into the lead okay, the first few paragraphs of the article meanwhile when you talk about scanning it's about reading rapidly as i mentioned earlier you look into specific facts so that's what you do for instance when you look into the dictionary 
you just scan and look into the meaning of a particular word. Okay? What else? When you read a magazine, that's what you do. You scan the pages and if a particular topic interests you, and that would hint you to stop and read for a while, right? So again, scanning is just looking for specific things in the piece or in the article. Okay? That's the help of the items which are put in bold face in textbooks, for instance. If a particular word or phrase or subsection is written in bold face, that means to say it is um, very important or it's something that you have to remember. Okay, moving on. So the next lecture will focus on critical viewing. Again, for the receptive skills, we have three critical reading, critical viewing, and then media literacy. Okay, so thank you for watching our first lecture under the receptive skills. If you have questions, please type them in the comment below. Thank you.